Our next honoree is someone who not only was an outstanding athlete, but really paved the way for many of the outstanding female athletes who were to follow her. Prior to the late 70s, most of the history of female athletes at Watertown High School, or in any high school, is written in story, not in statistic. Because they didn't compete in leagues, they didn't keep statistics, they just sort of played, people thought, for the fun of it. But at a certain point in time, that changed, and pioneering that change was Jane Ford, class of 1979. In 1976, when Jane Ford was on a school bus en route to practice with her team, the blue lights from a cruiser flashed and the bus pulled over and was boarded by a Watertown police officer who asked that Jane remove herself from the bus and he told her that she could not practice with the team. Jane was a girl. The team was the West Junior High School Ice Hockey Squad and the Massachusetts Association of Junior High School Principals had decided that girls could not play contact sports. And the patrolman that day had the unhappy task of enforcing the rule. But that day had a happy ending. 13-year-old Jane went before the Watertown School Committee, and the committee voted to allow her to play and further went on that next year they would form a girls' hockey team, the first such school-sponsored team in Massachusetts. She was hardly a charity case. From an early age, she was a noted athlete. She'd even played the role of pioneer before, becoming, uh, in 1974, the first girl to play in the Watertown Little League, and she blossomed into an all-star first baseman. She later became a standout catcher for the Watertown High School softball squad. In hockey, she had been a star in the Watertown Red Devils youth hockey team. At the same time, she was establishing herself in extracurricular play with the all-girl Assabet Valley Club. Aspen Valley won the Boston Arena Tournament in 1976, and then in April of that year, won the Girls Hockey National Championship in the teen division. And Jane was chosen to the national all-star team. So when she tried out for the West Junior goalie slot, it wasn't a fluke, and she won it fair and square. Her first game in the Nets, Watertown drubbed Ringe Tech uh, Junior High. And after that, it wasn't an easy road, as several teams threatened not to play Watertown if a girl was in the Nets. Derogatory remarks came to her at every turn, and her two teammates were unreservedly supportive. She also has fond memories of the West Junior High School principal, Jack Burns, and his unwavering support for her, and of coaches Devaney and Vlakos and Tramash, who taught her a lot about goaltending. Those lessons were put to good use on the Watertown High School squad, the varsity ice hockey squad, coached by Peter Pomponi, posted a 3 to nothing shutout of Concord in its first varsity home game. After she graduated from Watertown High School, she joined the Providence, Providence College hockey team and her teammate and fellow Hall of Fame member, Susan Duffy. She was unbeatable in the Nets, leading Providence to the EAIAW championship game with 34 saves, many of them spectacular. In a 5-3 to three victory over Cornell, she played superbly in the final. Providence posted three straight 20-win seasons for a four-season tally of 79 and 70, 17 during her career. She had a career goals against average of Providence of 2.46 to go with seven shutouts and a save percentage of .900. After graduating from Providence in 1983, she went to work as a goalie coach for the French Hockey Association. That team won the silver medal in Grenoble, France, and went on to the 84 Olympics. Since then, she has kept busy nurturing the next generation of Olympic athletes. She served as head of women's hockey of Massachusetts and New England, organizing state and national tourneys. She served on a selection committee for the U.S. women's national team and worked to organize the first team of U.S. women to play internationally. She's laid the groundwork for those girls who played in Nagano this year. We received a letter just the other day addressed to Sal Ciccarelli. Dear Mr. Ciccarelli, I've heard some wonderful news that Jane Ford was elected to the Watertown Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations to the committee on their most deserving selection of Jane. Jane has always been one to get involved and try to help people in athletics. I wish there were more people with her enthusiasm, dedication, and loyal support to help so many in the athletic arena. 
Signed, former Olympian, one of the greatest hockey players to ever play hockey in the United States, the athletic director at Harvard University, William J. Cl Billy Clary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this woman paved the way. She paved the way at Watertown for all female athletes who would follow her. A courageous pioneer, Jane Ford, class of 1979. Chris, you were right, it's tough up here. Um, whoever said you can't go home again never came home to Watertown. Thank you. <laughs> For me, there's a, three major things. Um, one is the opportunity to have played in Watertown and to have known the athletes that I have been able to play with is an unbelievable event. To have had the honor to have played with Debbie Romanelli, Susan Duffy, and John Velakis, who was probably the best coach I ever had in my life. So to John Jr., thank you. <laughs> obviously, hockey's been very important to me, and obviously it's opened an awful lot of doors to me. Um, this is the biggest one. I'd like to take a moment just to thank the committee, and also to acknowledge my fellow inductees. To everyone, happy and heartfelt congratulations. Um, one very special congratulations goes to Mr. Romanelli. Um, many of you now know that Mr. Romanelli was a great athlete in Watertown, but I've had the honor to grow up with the Romanelli family. He's not just a great athlete, he's a fine gentleman. Mr. Romanelli. For me, there's three major things, again. One is something that touches your life. Obviously, hockey did that. Then there's something that touches your heart. And the biggest thing that my experience of trying out for the boys' team is, is that I got to meet the administrative side of Watertown. I got to meet Dr. O'Connor, Mr. Burns, Mr. Younger, Mr. Carbone. Those gentlemen not only took advantage of a wonderful opportunity for female athletes in Watertown. They showed me what it meant to care for the individual. As a person who works at Holy Cross, I hope someday I can care for a student at Holy Cross the way these fine gentlemen cared for me. So Dr. Burns, excuse me, Mr. Burns, Dr. O'Connor, Mr. Younger, Mr. Carbone, I cannot thank you enough. Without your support, this event never would have happened for me and my family. So thank you. Hockey opened a lot of doors for me. Besides playing with, again, some of the finest athletes Watertown's ever had, I also played for some of the finest gentlemen Watertown ever had for coaches. Coach Pomponi, you laid that groundwork for us. Thank you. It's very hard to stand here and not look out at so many familiar faces. The two faces who mean an awful lot to me are Gail and Gina Mossman, who I haven't seen in a dog's age, to be honest. But they saw the article in the paper, and to have them come was unbelievable. I was lucky enough to have had Gail and Gina as softball coaches under uh, Jim McCauley back in the kind of school. So Gail and Gina, thank you. You know, I went to Providence, went with Sue. We had a great time. That was wonderful. Went to the... Um, over to coach in France, and what an experience. Got a silver medal in the World Championships, went to the Olympics. I actually have my name in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That means nothing. For you people to be here tonight, and a very special thank you to Mrs. Gooden, is something that touches not just my soul, but my parents. This is an incredible event. I'd like to thank my parents, my family, 
And if everybody in table 12 and 11 could just stand up for a minute. You know. Thank you. This is a moment I'll never forget. I thank you all very much.